I've been thinking lately I probably need to talk about how I got here, like back to, back to Canada and explain a bit, um, all the details that came to me actually coming back and why I'm not heading back to England anytime soon. Uh, we might as well start from the beginning. I didn't want to check up on renewing my visa until I was finished with college because college was so, so stressful when I was doing it. All of our time was taken up and I didn't want to throw anything else on top of that because I know how intricate the visa system is. I didn't want to stress myself out any more than I already was. So I wrapped up college and I actually went online to UK immigration and found that most of the visa options that I had two years ago in 2013, most of the options were gone. There's no renewal for the visa that I had. No matter what I did, I would have to go back to Canada and apply for another visa. But all the visas that I seemed to be able to get two years ago just were not there anymore. That's mostly because of what Tim talked about in his last video. Everything is such a big upset in England because they're really trying to keep people from getting into it. Even though Canada is a Commonwealth country, you only get so much breathing room. So to get a work visa, there is literally on UK Immigration, I'll link to it, an 80 page PDF of jobs that you're allowed to have if you're going to apply for that visa. And in order to get that work visa, you need to be earning 21k pounds sterling, which works out to roughly $42,000 a year. For someone that has recently graduated college and in their early 20s, getting a career or any type of job that would pay something like that, laughable. And most of the jobs that are listed in that PDF are skilled trade jobs, like carpenter, construction, or doctorate, things that require masters and PhDs. So July was mostly spent reeling and having no clue what I was actually going to do about that. So I, I put in my notice for my job in England, just sort of came to grips with the fact that I was going to have to leave, and I may or may not have no way back in. While this was happening, Tim and I got to talking and realized that we did not want this to come in the way of our future together. And the idea of engagements and marriage started getting thrown around. We realized that we were actually going to propose to each other around our three-year anniversary, which is March of next year. But because I was going to have to be leaving, I, I, would, I, I wouldn't be there for that. So what we did is on August 9th, we went to Cabot Tower in Bristol and we proposed to one another. We're actually engaged now, <laughs> which we're very happy about that. It's something that was going to happen anyway. And just having the ring, it's a constant reminder that the end goal is always for us to end up together in the same country. After that happened, the wheel sort of spun in the direction that we would try to get Tim to Canada instead of getting me back to England, because I had spent this whole time calling UK immigration, calling the Canadian embassy. I've done so much research, it's not even funny, and my options were basically zero. I have one option for a visa to get back into the UK right now, and that's either the traveler's visa, which everyone can get, it's just you're, you're, you're traveling. You can't work. You have to leave in six months. And the one visa option I have is the fiancé visa. Now that we are engaged, I could go back to the UK for six months, but again, I can't work. And in those six months, I need to get married. I need to sign my marriage certificate in the UK. Now, I'm 24. Tim is 21. We're engaged, yes, but we're not ready to fully be married. Which leads me into the problem that I'm having right now, is now that I'm telling you all of these details, this is the stuff that most people don't hear when they hear that I've come back to Canada and that I can't go back to England. They don't understand why, and this is why. Because the UK is slowly but surely shutting their borders. The visa I had, I can't get again. And the most annoying one is people keep asking, oh, why don't you just get married now? Research has also shown us that 
even if Tim and I got married today and signed the marriage certificate in the UK, you still have the waiting period. Oh my god, a cat! They always show up when I'm recording. This house is filled with cats. <laughs> okay. Even if you sign your marriage certificate in the UK, you have a two-year waiting period after you are married before you're applicable for a spousal visa. I would be applicable for a spousal visa in the UK in 2017 if we got married today. Which means I would be married to him and we still could not live together. Not only that, he would have to be earning 18,600k in pounds a year. That's about $3,700 Canadian. In this particular situation, marriage is not the fix-all. So there really is zero point in rushing the marriage. And I'm not compromising my wedding to get a visa. So that's basically where Tim and I are at. I've left the UK because there was nothing that could keep me there. I'm not looking for visas at the moment because right now the border and immigration policies are only getting worse. So what we're looking at right now is getting Tim a job in his field over here in Canada because our borders are still relatively open and there are a lot more opportunities for him to come here. All we want right now is just to be back on the same continent. I don't think what we want is too much to ask for. I would deal with our shitty visa system a thousand times. If I could just be there. If he could just be here. If we could just be together. This is why I hate when people talk about closing the borders and, and even though I had a job and education in the UK, it was not enough to keep me there. No matter what I did, and you play by the rules, it's not enough. And the bottom line is always just going to be to get us living together. That's all we want. Of course, we want careers and, and our goals. Those are separate from the situation right now, because right now we have just been completely ripped apart by this. And now being back home in Canada, I have a makeup job. I have my new car, which I'm so in love with. <laughs> These are all things that you could chalk up to. Well, your life isn't that bad. It's like, no, my life is balanced. Maybe at the moment. I'm not the type to look on the bright side and see a positive way forward. I just got moved out of my home. I lost my job in England. I left my fiance and my family there. Personally, I left at, at the shittiest time. Everything I have here, everything I'm getting, like the job and the car, Christmas with my family for the first time since 2012, it's not enough. It's not enough. Because all I want is my fucking boy. There's a bear on my head. Oh, look out. I'll go talk to the bear for a bit. Hello, Mr. Bear. Oh. Oh, hi. I'm a bear, and I love being in Canada, because it's cold. And it snows sometimes, and I can go get a coffee and some donuts. <laughs>